What's this webinar about? It's about RQWare P5. RQWare P5 is a data management software suite. I'll explain what that means in a moment. We've got uh, archive backup and replication functions within that suite. We run in lots of different places, platforms, devices, and cloud services, and we're very easy to use. So I would say those are the four main things. Let's dive in a little bit deeper to understand what we mean by data management software. P5 is popular in media rich environments. So our kind of core market is like broadcast, media and entertainment, where there's maybe video, audio, a lot of data being created. We handle this data across four different modules, which I'll explain to you in a moment. We run pretty much anywhere and we work in, in an agnostic way with disk tape and cloud storage. So we'll run with any tape vendor, disk vendor, cloud vendor almost, uh, that is currently out there. And it's software that you purchase outright to run wherever you want to run it. Uh, it's, a, it's a license in perpetuity. It's not a subscription, but we have an annual maintenance if you want to keep updated and with access to tech support. So the four ArchiWare P5 modules are these. Uh, we have P5 Backup, Archive, Synchronize, and Backup to Go. So in more detail, P5 Backup is a disaster recovery tool. We all know what a backup product is. You need a couple of backups to be safe. P5 Backup is one of them. It can write your backup data to either disk storage, LTO tape storage, or cloud storage, one of the different cloud vendors that we support. It's a disaster recovery DR tool. It doesn't keep your data forever. Backups shouldn't normally be used to keep data forever. You should use it in conjunction with something like P5 Archive, which moves data, uh, finished work that doesn't need to be on live storage. It can move that data in a workflow for you to create uh, free space and so that you can get back that data long term. Uh, it does that by, again, writing to disk, tape, or cloud. So the, the same uh, storage formats are supported. But the archive module includes uh, mini asset management functionality. So you can see previews and access stored metadata to locate that old file that you archived five years ago that you've decided that you need to get back. In addition, P5 Archive is able to integrate with a number of third-party media asset management and digital asset management products from other vendors. I'll show you a slide with some of those products on it. So P5 and P5 Backup, P5 Archive have disk tape and cloud storage as the target in common. P5 Synchronize is cloning. So it's cloning between disks attached to different hosts over a LAN, local area network or wide area network, which would give you an off-site storage facility. Uh, it allows immediate access and failover by accessing the data that you've replicated to that other host and includes the ability to do snapshots and versioning. So you're not just having access to the latest copy of the files, but you can go back in time. And finally, the fourth product over on the right-hand side, Backup to Go, is for backup of Mac OS and Windows workstations. as a timeline restore, a bit like Apple's Time Machine, and that runs on devices that support snapshot file systems like uh, QNAPs and Synologies and Netgears and so on, or you can run it on, a, on your own Linux OS if you've got a snapshot file system available. So just to reiterate, Backup and Archive support tape, disk, and cloud. Synchronize and Backup to Go are writing to disk. Backup and Archive, of course, are reading data from your, uh, you, your production storage or whatever, your disk storage, and writing data out to disk, tape, or cloud. The, uh, a bit more information on the disk, tape, and cloud support. Disk support, any vendor. Like I said, we're agnostic. We're not tied to any particular platform. We can make a solution with any kind of hardware. We support direct attached, network attached uh, storage area networks. Tape support is splendid support. We support all the tape vendors, all of the drives, all, you know, all of the different generations of LTO, including LTO 9 coming soon. Uh, we, we support standalone drives. We support libraries with any number of drives and slots within. And the cloud support is all of the major cloud players from Amazon, Microsoft, Backblaze, Google, Wasabi, and anything that supports the S3 protocol. And within Amazon, for example, we support S3, Glacier Deep Archive. We support the Snowball hardware devices and so on. Same goes for Backblaze and Microsoft. Uh, tape libraries, quick slide just to remind that any vendor is a big sell selling feature of this product. We're not tied to anything. Uh, we support anything from a kind of mid-range 25 slot 
through some something a bit bigger, maybe 80 slots, two drives. So you could do cloning across the two drives, simultaneous writing same data redundantly across tapes, up to big wardrobe sized libraries with hundreds of slots and many LTO drives used in different configurations, different jobs running at the same time using different drives. P5 runs everywhere, pretty much. So we support all the regular operating systems, Windows, Mac, Linux. This is FreeBSD. If you want to make a free NAS server or something like that, open source. We support Solaris as well, older OS uh, from Oracle that uh, is used in some environments. We support that as a data source and destination, which we call a client. NAS devices, I'm listing these ones here. There are others, but we're in the stores for QNAP, Synology, and Netgear. That means when you log into your QNAP web interface, go to the store, search for Archiware, you can click install and have P5 running. All you need is a license to activate it. And over on the right, cloud de deployment is now really trivial in Amazon Web Services Marketplace. Again, search for Archiware or P5 and you can fire up a Linux box in the cloud with P5 pre-installed, ready to take a license and start having some fun with it. These are all of the, uh, the the vendors who we have integrations with or directly support. So there are some MAMs here like uh, Axel, CatDV. There are some storage vendors like Spectra, QNAP, Synology, um, storage or tape storage. There are some MAMs like Kino and so on. So there are either direct integrations that allow Arcuware to drive these MAMs directly or be driven by them or they are just storages that we directly support. And uh, if you visit the URL there, um, you, can, you can see all of the details. On, there's a page behind each one of those icons. So one of the things that makes P5 easy to use is the fact that it's browser-based for its configuration, administration, and monitoring. You do everything in the browser. You can do it remotely from home if you're away from the office, as many of us are. You can use HTTP, HTTPS, and you can also get job emails uh, to tell you what P5 has been doing. If somebody's been restoring something or archiving something, all of that can come as information and emails to people that need to see it. Uh, this is a very, well, not that simple, I guess, but this is an illustration of a P5 backup and archive running just to show you what the topology is. So up at the top here, we've got a host, one of those platforms that we run on running P5. It has some local storage. And in this case, it has a tape library with some tapes attached via either SAS or fiber channel. And then via the LAN, the network here, we have some other hosts where P5 is also installed. And the, these hosts also have data on that needs to be backed up and archived. So with P5, you can create a workflow where the data from all of those various storages can land on this uh, tape library, treated as a shared resource, and people can back up an archive to that tape library using that web interface and creating workflows that run at certain times and so on. Of course, the tape library could be uh, a chunk of cloud storage or disk storage or any combination of those three things running however you want to run it. The synchronized, so this is the replication or cloning product, uh, might look like this if we were to draw the same diagram with a P5 sync server at the top and then a client down at the bottom where we are replicating data from this live production storage here down to this, this copy, which could be across a wide area network, so it could be to another location. Um, and of course, you could have a much more complex topology here with satellite offices replicating back to a central office, lots of things, lots of interesting ways of doing it. And you could combine that with backup to have two separate backups. So next thing I'm going to do is a demo. So let me just flick to a different tab here. So this is what P5 looks like once you've installed it somewhere. This is running on Linux. Uh, and you point your browser at the IP address of that box and you log in. So we have uh, a user management area where different users can have different permissions. Somebody could be an administrator. Another user could just have basic access to restore some files. You'll see the four different modules are reflected across the top in these tabs. So here's archive, here's backup. And within each of these, you're going to configure your cloud storage, your tape libraries, your standalone drives. You can you basically create what we call pools, which are grouped storages of many volumes across many tapes. So you could have a, a big backup pool in a tape library that gives you many terabytes or hundreds of terabytes of capacity. That's called a pool. And within that pool, you'll have lots of tapes or volumes that may exist on disk or cloud. A backup configuration would occur here and might look something like this. 
where you have some client machines and directories to back up configured at the top. And at the bottom, you can configure a schedule to say, do me an incremental backup half past 10 on these days of the week to this pool of storage, which you've configured previously. So everything is pretty intuitive in terms of the setup. Uh, I'm just quickly going to show you what an archive workflow looks like. So if I just double click on one of these guys, uh, there's a tabbed interface here. So we can do things like automatically archive a folder on a host machine on a schedule. So this would be archiving via a hot folder. People put stuff in that hot folder. And at 2300 hours, we archive the contents of that, that hot folder to tape or cloud or wherever you want it to go. Uh, preview generation is allowing us to generate little thumbnails of stuff that you've archived in the index so you can see those files even if they've been moved off to tape. This utilizes open source FFmpeg image magic to do that work and we have the ability to ingest metadata so data embedded inside the files that you've been archiving that can be pulled into our index so you can search that stuff later. So speaking of the index when I click on the restore tab and click on archive on the left hand side and choose an index i'm just going to go with this one you can see here that i've been archiving various folders off of various machines if we look inside of this data share inside this images folder and down inside this sports folder you can see here there's a bunch of jpeg files that we archived at various dates we stored uh, jpeg little thumbnails of these files so we can see what they look like and if i double click on one of these you get an info window to see for this particular file, when was it archived, when was it archived, uh, what storage was it archived to. And down here you can see that there's a, there's a caption, actually an IPTC caption that's embedded inside of this JPEG file that we can, uh, we, we, we can read, but we can also edit and we can search on. So there's a search facility within this index where I could search across the caption or the file name or the date of archive and so on, and uh, pull pull back a bunch of files to, uh, to to restore. If we're interested in restoring something, it's just a case of adding that to a restore selection like this, and then I could go shopping around, add some other folders to my restore, and then once I trigger the restore, P5 will calculate how much data I'm restoring. It'll tell me which volumes, wherever they might be, tape, cloud, or disk, and then I can choose where I want to recover that data back to. So uh, this is a quick webinar, aware of time, jumping back into the slides. Um, if you're wondering how much all of this functionality costs, then on the Archiware website, which is p5.archiware.com, there is a price configurator in dollars, euros, and pounds that lets you tap in the functionality that you're interested in, and then you can arrive at some list prices so you can see uh, the cost of the product. Uh, finally, uh, via the download page, the, the, the big blue link in the middle, you can grab the latest copy of the installer. Like I said, if you've got a QNAP or something like that, you can install via the store. And you can also request a five or 30 day trial stroke evaluation license, which is fully functional for a limited period of time. Uh, yeah, you can download the current version, activate it, connect it to your tape hardware or your cloud storage, and then start to have a play and see if you can do what you need to do with P5 before you go ahead and buy it.